Hello, everyone. My name is Vernon Vincent. I'm the Medical Affairs Director and Professional Education Manager for Reshaped Life Sciences. My pleasure to prepare a series of interviews for you and explain uh, from a different perspective why you might be interested in including the lap band in your practice as you leave your fellowship. Today's interview is with Dr. David Davtion from the Davtion Medical Center for Weight Loss and Wellness in Los Angeles, the greater Los Angeles area, and um, many years of experience with the lap band from a private practice perspective. Dr. Davtion, good day. How are you, sir? Doing very well. How are you? Great, great. Thanks very much for your time. Thank and, you. For uh, yeah. The, the audience, as, as we've discussed, are surgeons who are just finishing their bariatric fellowship. And kind of a perspective today as to, uh, from you, that might interest them is why would they be interested in including the lap band in their practice? Why would they like to diversify, actively in, engage lap band patients? So that's sort of the, the backdrop. First, I'll go through a few questions with you. How did you get into bariatric surgery initially? Well, uh, initially I got involved because of uh, personal reasons. Um, I had a lab band myself in 2001 uh, before it was approved in the United States. I attended a conference where uh, Guy Bernard Cadier presented uh, his data from uh, Belgium. And uh, my background was actually a fellowship trained surgical oncology. So I trained at MD Anderson at John Wayne Cancer Institute. So I was doing very high-end uh, cancer operations, liver resections, cryoablations, etc. And, uh, you know, my, from the stresses of life, my uh, weight had uh, also expanded. Um, I'm, I'm not immune to the modern era diseases. Uh, so I uh, uh, attended this conference, uh, not because of the obesity I attended, because of it was called minimally invasive uh, surgery uh, and uh, it was uh, held by the uh, Phil Showers, um, and during that conference, I heard the lecture on the lab band presented by uh, Cadier, and uh, it uh, basically uh, shocked me that uh, you know, 15-minute procedures. That that's how long he, his presentation was with the video and everything. Uh, that such a minimally invasive procedure that does not even alter your anatomy significantly. Uh, can make uh, such a tremendous impact on one's well-being, uh, uh, address obesity as well as comorbid conditions. So I went to Belgium. I uh, trained with uh, Cadier. I spent time with him. I watched him operate. And then once I was, uh, you know, I confirmed uh, my initial excitement about the procedure, I went ahead and had the procedure myself. Uh, and um, after that, uh, basically, gradually o overtook my practice. So now, primarily, what I do is bariatric surgery. So that's 20-year history with the lap band. Yes. Wow. Very good. And your personal experience then translated into your clinical experience with your, your patients in Los Angeles. Tell us a little bit about the, how many patients and, and generally how they've done. Well, well I've done probably about uh, lap bands. Uh, 2,500 plus, uh, but a smaller number of uh, sleeves, uh, but I do both uh, and uh, as well as uh, gastric balloons. Uh, I do not do bypasses and uh, my uh, uh, current uh, sort of uh, practice is probably um, 60, 70 percent bands and uh, 30, 40 percent uh, sleeves. Mm -hmm. And your, your day in the office, what does that look like typically? Oh, my day <laughs> my day in the office can be uh, in this uh, COVID environment uh, rather complicated. But uh, uh, in general, uh, we see a lot of uh, new patients, obviously. Uh, we see a lot of uh, returns. Uh, we see a lot of adjustments because lab bands uh, constantly need attention. Uh, um, and um, so that's pretty much it. Um, I do have uh, several offices. I have one in Beverly Hills, one in Glendale, and one in Rancho Cucamonga, which is uh, you know, Inland Empire. So uh, I do cover a very broad uh, territory and uh, so very busy. So the, the aftercare and the constant follow-up that you just mentioned, 
it's described entirely in two different lights. One is a real advantage, a, a benefit of the lap band that it's adjustable, it's fine tunable, that you can accommodate a patient's lifestyle. They get pregnant, you can deflate as necessary, et cetera. On the other side of that coin is, oh my God, there's so much follow-up that's required, so many visits, all these adjustments. Um, is there a perspective on a, the middle of that line or a reason for the viability of your office, as well as for the success of your patients, that the follow-up continues to happen? Well, the follow-up is very, in, in my view, uh, follow-up is important in any aspect of medical care. Uh, as I mentioned, I was brought up as a surgical oncologist in a premier center such as MD Anderson or John Wayne Cancer Institute. So uh, very, very close follow-up, particularly in oncological patients uh, where, you know, if I did a mastectomy, then that patient was mine for the next 20 years. Uh, and I would do very, very close follow-up uh, to mention, make sure that they're not recurring, to make sure that the chemo worked, to make sure radiation worked, et cetera, et cetera. So I was like the conductor of the orchestra. So I uh, still maintain that same view uh, in my practice of uh, bariatric surgery. I think uh, obesity is a chronic disease. I don't think it is going to go anywhere uh, until we uh, come up with some uh, drastic uh, pharmacological or genetic uh, or some uh, biological very specific intervention. Uh, surgeries are rather crude ways of dealing with this disease, but those are the only ways that we have now that are effective. And no surgery is better than the other one, I can tell you outright, because stomach is elastic. So it stretches, no matter whether it's the pouch of the lap band, the pouch of ruin y gastric bypass, or the sleeve itself, stomach is elastic, it stretches. So if patients uh, eat more and more, they are going to stretch it more and more, so there will be some um, uh, recurrence of the weight, of weight regain, and somebody needs to follow these people very, very closely to make sure that you intervene in an appropriate uh, times. And uh, so uh, close follow-up is uh, very, very important no matter which procedure you do, so I do not subscribe at all to the notion of sleeve them and leave them. I think that's a very cynical approach and it does not reflect what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, uh, any sleeve patient will do better with chronic follow-up uh, and uh, chronic follow-up is just, it's good, it's important. You learn more about your patients, you, you get an opportunity to correct their uh, um, mischief, uh, let's call it, if, if they are uh, sort of increasing their oral intake or gravitating towards high calorie intakes and you get an opportunity to fix it, to advise them, to change. You get an opportunity to interfere, to uh, prevent vitamin deficiencies, et cetera, et cetera. So there are numerous opportunities to impact patients' uh, livelihood with close follow-up and that's why I do it. The oncology model is a very, um, very salient one. Uh, surgeons who have started over the years and ask for what kind of nurse can I find to help me do this? And I, I tell them to go find a burnt out oncology nurse, somebody who really likes patients, talks to patients, holds their hands all the time, but is burnt out because their patients have always demised. Whereas lap band patients, weight loss surgery patients can get better over time. It's a rewarding situation. Would you say that? Indeed, it is indeed. And, 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 it is also uh, rewarding on multiple aspects. I mean, uh, uh, one of the uh, frustrating parts, I guess, uh, in oncology was that, uh, uh, that no matter how good your operation, there was nothing to show for it. Uh, um, uh, your, your, your good results would be seen or measured as a five or 10 year survivorships. Uh, uh, whereas here with the ob obesity, you know, somebody loses 100 pounds, it's very, very visible and uh, gives us joy to see these people back in our clinic. Great. So from the young surgeon about to start a bariatric practice, he's gone through all of his training, his fellowship, and now he's about to launch and land somewhere. Why should that individual think about adding either access for follow-up for patients or new band patients, why should diversifying their practice with the lap band be on their mind? Well, the uh, first of all, um, obesity population is not a uniform population. It's a very large population and very diverse population, number one. Uh, number two, there are different modalities currently available from the band to the uh, balloon or 
actually the reverse order going from the less le least invasive would be the balloon to bands to sleeves to bypass to uh, BPDDS. So uh, clearly one should uh, be able to do any one of these procedures and be able to offer them as long as they uh, share the value of that procedure. Uh, I offer uh, balloons because I think there is a subset of patients who will do very well with the balloons. Uh, people, let's say, who are uh, typically or normally are uh, uh, not obese, but due to some circumstance in life, such as pregnancy, have gained 20, 30 pounds. Now they need a quick uh, uh, uneventful or non-surgical intervention to drop those 20, 30, 40 pounds. Uh, I think balloon is a very, very good uh, method for those. But uh, if patients are coming and asking me for uh, 80, 90 per pound weight loss and are uh, hoping that the balloon is going to accomplish it, that's not at all the case. And that comes a turn for the lab band. Now, uh, in, a, in, a, in a sort of more, amongst the more commonly done procedures, let's say sleeve and uh, bypass, lap band next to him uh, can be, uh, and in my hands is, equally effective. Uh, you just need to uh, do proper patient selection. Proper patient education is of utmost importance. And then once these patients are properly selected, properly educated, and with proper uh, follow-up, you can get uh, amazing results, uh, be it either the uh, amount of weight loss, uh, percent of excess weight loss, let's say, or the uh, uh, speed with which uh, you can get it, or uh, longevity. So, uh, you know, largest number or greatest number of weight loss uh, pound-wise, uh, I've had people lose 200 plus, 250, 260. Uh, we've had that. Um, lose and maintain it for a decade? Sure, we've had that too. Uh, lose uh, quickly or lose slowly? That's in your hands because LabBound has that beautiful ability to do the adjustment. So if you uh, have a healthy patient uh, who is otherwise uh, okay and wants to lose uh, uh, it quickly, you maintain the tightness pretty tight and they, they lose uh, a lot fast. Uh, or if you have somebody who needs to go more uh, gentle, you can adjust it and uh, do it more gentle. So lap band is the most versatile of all of those operations that I mentioned. It is clearly the safest. I mean, the mortality of the lap band does not come even close to mortality of uh, sleeve and bypass. And if I am uh, going to give uh, this patient an informed consent, and I'm going to tell them that, hey, the mortality of sleeve and bypass is this and this, and the mortality of the lab band is this, uh, but five years later, your weight loss is going to be 60%, 70% excess weight, uh, give or take with either one of those procedures. Clearly patients are sure choosing what is safer. And you find today that in Los Angeles, given the information, given the opportunity, <clears throat> when you explain the options, patients are asking for lap bands. Patients are asking for lab bands. Uh, first of all, I have very educational uh, websites. Uh, uh, the website that's uh, m more in-depth for the lab band is called labbandla.com. And that website uh, uh, is uh, very in-depth, provides an opportunity of hearing patient testimonials, seeing patient videos. Uh, I also provide my patients an opportunity to speak any one of the patients. I mean, obviously, I have a very, very large number of uh, patients out of 2,500. I've got hundreds of uh, uh, fantastic results, which are sh showcased one way or the other. And of course, when patients see those results, they're saying, oh, wow, uh, this is great, or this is nice, or this is whatever. I tell them, you want to talk to this patient, I'll be happy to connect you. So I think that's very, very important for patient reassurance patients. This is very important decision making for them. So they need to know uh, uh, that uh, there, there is a team that will provide them information, but that there are also others who have been through it and will be willing and able to share their experiences. So uh, that is very, very helpful. The last topic, which is sort of the, the flip side, the front end of this, an audience might say, wow, that's all sunshine and unicorns. What about problems? What about complications? Patients that are five, 10 years out or patients from somewhere else that are 10 years out for any procedure. Tell me, just compare and contrast briefly the issues with all procedures 
down the road and how you prefer one or the other or what do you think about them? Well, I mean, it's uh, hard to do it briefly, uh, but uh, the basic message is this. Um, uh, so if you look at uh, what are the real complications that can happen, okay? Intra-op, post-op, or long-term. Well, the lab band does not cut viscera, so you're not crossing the intestinal barrier, so the, upper, the likelihood of infection or a catastrophic infection is very, very low, very, very low. So uh, uh, you just wrap a, a band around the stomach. Uh, it's a, what, 30, 40 minute procedure. They go home in one hour. You do it on a Friday, they can go back to work on Monday, brag about their new diet. Nobody needs to know anything happened to them. And it does not affect their ability to perform their work either. Uh, with a sleeve, it is definitely much more involved. Uh, the operation is longer, but as far as the probability of complications, uh, it is much, much more complex. I mean, we sugarcoat it, calling it uh, a gastric sleeve, uh, although it is an appropriate term, I guess, descriptively. It does not at all reflect that we're doing basically what is otherwise known as subtotal gastrectomy. This is a major, major operation. You've got a 30 centimeter staple line that could leak. There are a lot of vessels that are divided that could bleed. You're operating in vicinity of spleen that can get traumatized. You're operating in vicinity of pancreas that can get pancreatitis. You're operating in vicinity of mesenteric vessels that you can get uh, uh, mesenteric vein thrombosis and then portal vein thrombosis, and that patient's life is screwed up. So we're talking about very, very high risk uh, uh, area of operation and very, very high risk operation altogether. And that explains a uh, fairly high uh, risk of mortality that's across the nation, available through ASMBS uh, website. And uh, clearly the lap band does not even come close to that. And then when you look at the long-term complications, well, uh, the sort of most common complication of the lap band is that uh, the pouch, which is above the, the area of the stomach that is cardia, above the band, it can stretch, okay? And if it stretches, it pulls the stomach up uh, from below the band. And uh, if I make it a size of, uh, let's say, a chestnut immediately after the operation, several years later, it becomes a size of a tangerine and then the band will stop functioning properly. At that point, you need to intervene, and that intervention is much, much uh, safer than an original sleep. All you need to do is go back in, surgically obviously, uh, open up your band, uh, reduce that prolapsed segment of stomach, uh, refasten your band, uh, re-suture, put the suture so it does not slip again, and hope that the patient learned the lesson and is not going to abuse it. Uh, whereas with sleeve, if you get a uh, dilation, dilation of the sleeve, what are, what are the options? Resleeve or move up to a much higher complexity uh, um, uh, operation such as uh, Rui gastric bypass, which has higher morbidity and mortality rate. So uh, clearly, either short-term complications, interop complications, post-op complications, or long-term complications, uh, these operations are far and far behind. And if you look at the five years uh, weight loss, if you do proper follow-up and keep your band fairly tight, you can get, I mean, my patients are enjoying 60%, 60, 65% excess weight loss after five years. Well, guess what? That is what I'm seeing with the sleep patients also. It's not like uh, sleep is a panacea. I mean, it's a very good operation for some people, but it's not a uh, 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 magic and uh, uh, Clearly, uh, there is a group of people who would benefit from one, group of people who would benefit from the other. But my philosophy is because the band is the safest, I think any bariatric surgeon should start with the band, do the band first in all comers and see what kind of weight loss you can squeeze out of them. And those who fail band, because it is reversible five, six, 10 years later, remove the band, move on to the next stage. Obviously, it's a lifelong disease. So uh, you can move on to leg the next stage 10 years later, and if your sleep fails in another 10 years, maybe you can move on to a bypass. But uh, I think we should always start with the safest. Well, <clears throat> very much appreciate that perspective, the continuum of care concept that is so common, for instance, in your oncology background, the um, starting with the least invasive and, and working up. 
So with that, David, I really sincerely appreciate your time. These uh, short little interviews hopefully will help people understand the perspective as to not only why you continue to do bands, but why many still do across the country and why they might consider having a look at it. And it's their choice. And we hope that they, at a minimum, learn how to manage lap band patients such as yourself. If you walked into their office on a Saturday afternoon, you would come out with your band. David, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Brian, if, any, Brian, if any of your fellows want to have uh, further questions or want to reach out to me, I'm very available. So please uh, provide that access uh, to them. So if they want to ask more questions or discuss this topic further, uh, I'll, I'll be more than happy to accommodate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Real pleasure. You have a good day, sir. Thank you very much. Good talking to you. Thank you.